Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Grace Episcopal Church. It's great to have you here on this wonderful, beautiful morning. I'm Reverend Charles Ulick. I'm the rector and pastor here. It is good to be with you. Let us stand and celebrate God's grace and love around us. Number 524 in your blue hymnal. Number 524. In our Book of Common Prayer, the Red Book, page 319, page 319, if you are able, please kneel with me or remain standing. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. Page 320. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to, fi to help in time of need. Hebrews 4, chapter, verses 14 and 16. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against Thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with thy whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways. To the glory of thy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our colic prayer can be found on page two of your worship aid. O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the things that which thou commandest and desire that which thou dost promise, that so among the sundry and manifold changes of the world our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us be seated as we hear God's sacred words. A reading from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. And you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them. The flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds. O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off immediately. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord, the word of the Lord.
for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. Reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 6 through 11. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. Since the spirit of God dwells in you, Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, through the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies and through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Amen. Please join me in singing our gospel sequence hymn, number 511, found in your blue hymnal. Number 511, Holy Spirit Ever Living. We'll sing the first verse before the gospel and the second after. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. This is from John chapter 11 verses 1 through 45. Today's gospel is being done with a scripted version. There was, there was a certain man named Lazarus who was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. This was Mary's, whose brother's Lazarus was sick, who was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and dried his feet with her hair. The sisters sent word to Jesus to inform him, Lord, the one who you love is sick. Upon hearing this, Jesus said, This sickness is not to end in death. Rather, it is for God's glory that through the Son of God may be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus very much. Yet after hearing that Lazarus was sick, he stayed on where he was for two days more. 
Finally, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. Rabbi, protested the disciples, with the Jews only recently trying to stone you, you are going back up there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? If a man goes walking by day, he does not stumble because he sees the world bathed in light. But if he goes walking at night, he will stumble since there is no light in him. Our beloved Lazarus has fallen asleep but I am going there to wake him. At this, the disciples objected. Lord, if he is asleep, his life will be saved. And Jesus had been speaking about his death, but they thought it, he meant sleep in the sense of slumber. Finally, Jesus said plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sakes, I'm glad I was not there, that you may come to believe. In any event, let us go to him. Then Thomas, one who means twin, said to, to his fellow disciples, Let us go along to die with him. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. The village was not far from Jerusalem, just under two miles. And many Jewish people had come out to con console Martha and Mary over their brother then Martha heard that Jesus was coming. She went to meet him. While Mary sat at home, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would never have died. Even now, I am sure that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Your brother will rise again. I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he should die, will come to life. And whoever is alive and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, he who is to come into the world. When she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary. The teacher is here asking for you. As soon as Mary heard this, she got up and started out in his direction. Actually, Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still at the spot where Martha had met him. The Jews were in the house with Mary, consoling her, saw her get up, and go, get up quickly and go out. So they followed her, thinking she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to the place where Jesus was, seeing him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would never have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had accompanied her also weeping, he was troubled in spirit, moved by the deepest emotions. Where have you laid him? Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep, which caused the Jews to remark, see how much he loved him? But some said, He opened the eyes of that blind man. Why would he not have done something to stop this man from dying? Once again, troubled in spirit, Jesus approached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across of it. Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, it has been four days now. Surely there will be a stench. Did I not assure you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God displayed? They then took away the stone, and Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd, that they may believe that you sent me. Having said this, he called out loudly, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, bound head and foot with linen strips, his face wrapped in a cloth. Untie him and let him go free. This caused many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did to put their faith in him. The Gospel of the Lord.
I am about to say be in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In today's gospel, we hear in this very lengthy story of friendship and of death. In our very first reading from Ezekiel, we also hear the same images of a lifeless body, human skin, being breathed on and brought to life once again. This Lenten season is sometimes very difficult for many people, and especially for Christians who are not a part of a liturgical tradition. Lent is a anomaly of where the church tries to bring in the spirituality of denying oneself, self-sacrifice, doing works of mercy, and also perpetuating a closer relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a season of where we look at the darker sides of ourselves. It's not very pleasant, but what it does tell us and what it does try to help us as a church is to practice that in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, this story of Lazarus coming from being resurrected from the dead is one of disheartment, tragedy, and longing. Many of us who have been living as adults and even as children have probably experienced different types of death. And see, death is not just simply the loss of another person's life in our lives. Death is also the people, the experiences, the places we work, the people that are special to us, who become disconnected. See, there's many types of death. There's death from a divorce. There's death from losing your job of 30 years. There are deaths of all different types of friendships lost. And yes, death of the life of someone very special to us. Young and old, death never comes easy. But it is a part of what we talk about today as how God is with us in that death. There's a story from Lynn Joust who writes of a little girl who was 12 years of age. Her name was Julian. Her dad happened to be a pastor. And she went to him and said that she didn't know if she could be confirmed in the faith of Jesus Christ because she couldn't believe everything forever. How can I do that, Daddy? She said. And her father said in wisdom, what you promise in confirmation is not that what you will believe forever, but what you do promise is that the story you will wrestle with for the rest of your life. I think that captures today in our gospel very, very much. What are we wrestling with? What is the part of our lives that we wrestle with that we don't like to look at? What do we want to resurrect? What do we want to bury? These are the things that the season of Lent and why we buried that A word at the beginning of our church season of Lent in this box right below me. To capture the self-reliance that not all things are to be celebrated. Not all things can be celebrated. But that we need to look and ask God for strength and direction in our lives. We need to wrestle with it. Death is something that sometimes we Time we find ourselves thinking that, oh, I'll just get by. I don't need anyone. Thank you for your 
your platitudes. This is the selfishness of our human makeup that we would like to draw into when we lose something of our very core, a spouse, God forbid, a child. These are the things that we find ourselves compelled about, about how we want to be by myself. What Jesus is reminding us of in this gospel message is that we cannot dive there because that is a dark place where only darkness resides. It is lonely. It is very tiresome. And it is very troubling. Jesus gives us the example of Martha and Mary reminding them and asking him the question, if you had only been here, he would have lived. And yes, four days later, we are confronted with that. And Jesus specifically says and asks in his prayer to his Father in heaven, our Creator, Help me do this. Help me bring Lazarus to life. And just as in the wind and the breath that brings in Ezekiel to those hewn skins, God brings life into those skins. He brings life into our awareness that we cannot do all things by ourselves, but we must ask for help. We must accept the help that people want to give. It is the voice that Jesus gives to Lazarus to come out of that tomb. Who's there? Jesus isn't there by himself. He allows Martha and Mary. He allows the disciples. He allows those who are mourning of those Israelites the Jewish people who are helping Martha and Mary in their loss. They are a community. Just as we gather as a community of believers, as Christians, more than now than ever that we need to gather as community, as faithful believers, is to be able to hear Jesus saying, come out. Come out of your desperation. Come out of your loneliness. Do not live in the darkness any longer, but to live, wrestle with me, wrestle with me, come out and live again in the light of life. You do not need to live in darkness. Be a people who will be strengthened in the light. Just as that pastor who says to his daughter, you must promise to wrestle with the story of your promise of believing. None of us will ever have it perfect in this life. But what God says to us and what Jesus tells to us, to the people who are sitting there watching this man come out of a tomb, all wrapped in his linen, Face bewildered is that the community of believers are with you. You do not have to walk in loneliness or darkness when we lose someone. You can see a therapist. You can get help. You can come to church. You can have coffee with a friend. You can hear your coworkers who probably want to say, we're sorry we lost you with us. You will be missed. Come out. Come out and live. The Lord is calling you. Come out of your pain and your suffering, your loneliness, your bewilderment. Come out to the unexplained, to the unknown. Come out and trust with the community that loves you.
that wants to walk with you. Amen. Please stand with me now as we turn to page 326, page 326, and let us recite our faith and belief with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Offering our prayers as people of God, our response is on page four in your bulletin, Lord, hear our voice. Let us, if I invite you to kneel with me or remain standing, and let us offer our prayers as people of God. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit of God dwells in you. Let us appeal to our God, saying, We call to you, O Lord, hear our voice. Breathe new life into your church, O Lord. Where our bones are dried up, where our hope is lost, cause your life-giving breath to enter. Give us confidence in the truth that the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. Let us give thanks for all our who are celebrating life events this coming week, especially those celebrating their birthdays, Vicki Pittard, Michael Cochran, Kennedy Mathias, and for all couples who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries, especially Norma and Brad Rankin. We call to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our voice. Many are they who wait for you, O Lord. Speak into the souls of those suffering throughout the world a word of hope. We call to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our voice. Creating God, it is the wind of your spirit that sweeps across this planet. For those areas of our world and country and regions that are suffering due to unclean water to drink, soil erosion, or toxic air, renew and refresh your creation. Bring forth newness in dead places. We call to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our voice. With you, O Lord, there is plenteous redemption. Restore the hope within our communities where minds and hearts are strained. Renew our trust that you have a life-giving future in mind for us. We call to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our voice. With you, O Lord, there is mercy. Consider well the voice of those who call out from their depths. We we pray for those on our parish and military prayer lists, for those prayers written in our book of prayerful intentions, for safe seasonal weather, especially here in Western Kentucky and around our nation, for all those suffering from COVID and influenza, for the people of Ukraine and the end of war. Reveal your works in those who are suffering. As they wait for you in their pain and sorrow, give life to their mortal bodies by your healing spirit. We call to you, O Lord. 
Lord, hear our voice. God, we trust your Son, Jesus, to be for us resurrection and life. Give to the dead your new life in, our, in your heavenly kingdom. Assure the living with the promise of resurrection as we journey through our Lenten season. I'd like to especially remember the souls lost in Rolling Fork, Mississippi this, this past Friday for all of our loved ones. We call to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Christ. voice. O God of eternal life, whose glory is the human person fully alive in the tears that Jesus shed for Lazarus, his friend. May Jesus' incarnation of tenderness and compassion lead us this day and throughout this coming week. Hear our voices, creator, sanctifier, and redeemer. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. And let us offer each other as a sign of God's peace and love. The peace of the Lord be always with you. It is great to have you with us today, and especially if you're new to our community, please know uh, we're always here for you, and if you're visiting from another church, uh, know your pastor is also there for you as well. As we prepare for the Easter season, or for our Easter holiday, uh, we are uh, offering a uh, Uh, lilies, Easter lilies, to be purchased in the remembrance of a loved one or uh, as a part of our uh, way of commemorating a wonderful event in our lives. And those are $30. If you'd like to have one of those, please contact the parish office by the end of the month, uh, by uh, this coming Friday, the 31st. We also have a special announcement on palm crosses with Trish Hines. We welcome all ages. Everyone is able to learn the miracle of making the palm cross. The lessons are free. There will be refreshments, and by that I mean coffee and water. (laughs) So please come, come fool around with us on April 1st at 10 o'clock. There you go. It usually takes us about an hour. It is good fun and good conversation. All right. Thank you, Trish. Being a fool for Christ. Amen. Amen. You probably noticed our bulletin is white. (laughs) It's like stark white. Uh, That's because a major paper mill in our United States burnt down, and there are no colored papers uh, in the legal uh, (laughs) in the legal size that we normally have our bulletins. Uh, This it's being rebuilt, and other mills are taking over some of those uh, purchases and coloring all those things. And so we'll have white bulletins for probably a little while. So if that's if you're wondering, you're, you're not blind, you can see. <laughs> uh, Lent Madness, as if you have been following along with Lent Madness, the bracket game with holy people of holy God, I am offering, we're in the Elite Eight now. Yes, the Elite Eight. And two of my dark horses are coming to true. If you would like to participate and have fun with this, there is a little uh, box uh, or a little a basket outside my office. Uh, if you'd like to pick the person you think is going to win and put it in that little cup Lent, marked Lent Madness, there's a special prize for anyone who gets that right. You will get a commemorative cup with that person's image on it uh, for your coffee pleasure uh, in the future. It's a lot of fun learning about these 
Johann Sebastian Bach is coming out, and Jonathan Daniels, those are my two. They'll be going for the golden halo, as they say. Parish nurse Peggy Haney has got some needs for our school district. Uh, a lot of the schools are in need of different items, and so there, on the bulletin board just outside her office, there are many different items. If you'd like to help uh, support our schools here locally, uh, please look at those, and then uh, sh you can talk to her about how to get those to those schools. If you are interested in uh, wanting to be or have a little one or a person of your, your own self would like to be baptized, uh, we have a baptism celebration coming up on March or April uh, 9th, April 8th, on the great uh, vigil of Easter. Uh, that Saturday evening, we'll be baptizing uh, people of uh, different faith communities, um, Matthew Lutheran Church, uh, St. Matthew, and also First Presbyterian Church, where we'll be celebrating an ecumenical uh, service of the Great Vigil, if you'd like to join us. I'm also starting confirm adult confirmation classes uh, t uh, at the end of April. Uh, if you are interested in joining the Episcopal Church or wanting to know more about the church, please contact me about that and becoming a member of our church. Lastly, uh, this Wednesday, we have our last soup supper. It is comfort food. So comfort soups that you'd like to uh, uh, dine in, uh, please join us uh, this coming Wednesday at 5.15. And then right after that, at 6 o'clock, we have Godly Play. And the last class for Gloria McInerney uh, with looking at Stanley Spencer's artwork, but also she's also going to be looking at other Renaissance artists this week with also Holy Scripture, and that's also at 6 o'clock. Join us for hospitality right after our service, just out through that door uh, in Fletcher Hall for coffee and donuts, uh, to, and, and to create and help and participate in fellowship. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up as a sacrifice unto God.
We continue our service on page 340 in your Book of Common Prayer, the Red Book, page 340. Again, during the season of Lent, we've been using Rite 1, the more traditional uh, Elizabethan uh, prayers for the season of Lent. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is very meet and right in our bounded duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who dost bid thy faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy the paschal feast that in fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by the word and sacraments that they may come to the fullness of grace which thou hast prepared for those who love thee. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying... All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for thou dost create heaven and earth and did make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy did give us thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in re remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial of thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake in this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same, Jesus Christ, 
our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Wherever you are in your faith journey, all baptized Christians are welcome at this communion rail and at this altar. We'll have uh, one Eucharistic minister with the common cup and one Eucharistic minister with the intinction cup for you to pick from. If you would like a gluten-free wafer, we also have some of those that are also consecrated. Uh, for you as well. Please indicate that as you come forward. All are welcome.
Let us offer our prayer after communion found on page 339. Page 339. And let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee, for Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and Thou dost assure us thereby Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, and the blessed company of all faithful people are also heirs through hope of our everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Again, I hope you can join us for hospitality right after our service in Fletcher Hall. And if you're visiting for the first time, hope you can make us uh, come back and visit us again wherever you might be. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Let us go forth and be the church. Thanks be to God.